Hey there, today we're going to be taking a look at Split Text, one of the most popular GSAT plugins. And now, with the latest announcement, a plugin that's free for everyone to use. Split Text lets us split up an HTML element into lines, words, or characters, basically wrapping up each bit in its own element. Then we can whiz those bits around and create all sorts of gorgeous staggered animations and effects. Split Text recently got a complete rewrite, including sensible defaults for screen reader accessibility, easy masking for reveal effects, responsive line splitting, and much more. Split Text can also be used independently of GSAP, just in case you're only after the functional text splitting and don't need animation. Let's take a little look together. All right, so let's take a look at creating a simple split text animation first, then we can dig a bit deeper into the features. So first up, we're going to register the split text plugin. Then GSAP's core knows that we want to use it. We'll create a new split text instance. And if we feed in our element here, split text will split all of this text up into pieces. So the default is lines, words, and characters. If we open up the DOM and take a little look, you can see that everything here is all split up into pieces. We've got lines here, and then we've got words and characters. So if we want to customize this, say you want to just split by words or by characters only, we can pass in a config object. So we can define type, and then type lets us define which elements we want to split up. So let's just split by words for now. It's good for performance as well to just split what you need. More elements means more work for the browser. So we'll add a little GSAP tween here, and then we'll grab those words. So you can access your characters and words and lines on the split text instance itself, which we called split. And then we'll do a little GSAP tween to stagger them in. Lovely. So we can access lines and characters in the same way by accessing the properties where the array of elements live. So the type property accepts a comma separated string. So let's pass in the other values and then we'll swap this little bit out here so you can see the different animations. Great stuff. Another way of accessing all these little bits and bobs inside your split text is by giving them a class and then targeting that. It's also a nice way to add a hook for some styling. So let's give the words a class and you can see we've got a little border now. Brilliant. So I added some classes here so you can see the splits without us having to look in the DOM every time. So we can do the same thing, um, add a class to our lines using lines class, and then add a class to our characters using cars class, chars class. <laughs> you can also increment your classes by adding a little plus plus to the string here. So if we look in the DOM, we can see that all of the classes that we added are now numbered. I've added a little bit of CSS here to just target specific words. So you can see that these words have a little border around them. You can also add prop index true, which rather than a class adds a CSS variable. If we look in the DOM here, you can see the CSS variables here and here. So easy selecting means it's nice and simple to set up effects like this that target specific words. So this isn't part of the split text plugin, but while we have this demo ready to go and seeing as everyone loves a stagger, let's just cover some of the fun stagger options available to you. So right now we've got a very basic stagger. We're just saying stagger the characters with 0.05 seconds in between each animation. We can write that like this instead using the config object, which then gives us space for more options. Maybe we don't want to set time in between each animation. Maybe we want the entire stagger to last 0.5 seconds instead. We can also define where we want the stagger to start from. So right now it's starting from the beginning, but we can say end instead, or maybe center, or my favorite, random. If you put a repeat in the tween itself, the entire tween will play, then it will repeat when the animations have all finished. Or you can put this repeat and the yo-yo inside the stagger and each individual animation will repeat when it's finished. 
Another really fun thing to do with stagger animations is to apply some randomness to the values themselves. So we can do this really easily with GSAP's random utility. Let's animate the letters from either the top or the bottom. Note that this has got an array with two values in, so it's gonna pick either one of these values. We can also add a little rotation. So we're gonna use random again, but this time we're not passing an array. So this means any value between minus 30 and 30. Now we'll add a little bouncies for fun. And there we go. See how easy it is to make really fun effects. You can check out more about staggers in the GSAP docs. Another thing that we have to think about when we are animating fonts is font loading. Custom fonts sometimes take a little bit longer to load in than the default fonts. So it's common for people to end up with weirdly formatted splits because the split text divides up the text before the font loads in. So the measurements are a little bit off. So if we pop the console here, we can see that split text now informs us when the text was split before the custom font loaded in. So we get a little bit of a warning. So we can make sure that we're nice and safe by using document.fonts, popping our split and our tween in here. So this is a promise that fulfills when all of the fonts are done loading. So if we check out our console, we don't have the error anymore, perfect. There's also a nice shiny new callback in 3.13 that ensures that your tween's created when the text splits and not before. So this callback is nice and self-explanatory. It fires when the text is split. So rather than your tween being separate like this, we can grab it and then we can tuck it up inside the unsplit callback. This is also super useful for responsive line splitting. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Split text is also much smarter at splitting than a lot of other text splitting libraries. In this demo, we're loading in split text and also an alternative text splitting library that we've seen a lot of people using back when split text was a paid plugin. So now that split text is free, maybe this will entice you to swap over. We're just gonna split by characters and words for now. So if I split with split text, and then revert the split, you can see that the text doesn't move at all. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Whereas some other text splitting libraries, um, nested tags like this strong tag here kind of shift about. So the new rewrite of split text also handles special characters far better. If we split by characters and use this third party library, you'll see these weird little characters pop up. This is because there are certain characters and emojis that we see visually as one character, but they're actually grapheme clusters, which is a cool name. Basically under the hood, there are multiple code points that are smushed together by the browser into one visual character or emoji. So when we split them up, the browser just gets a bit confused. Split text solves for most of these use cases internally. So if we split using split text, you can see that we've just got the text as it should display. White space is also handled a lot better in the new version, which is especially nice when you're working with pre-tags. Working on the web means thinking about how things work on different screen sizes and if the browser resizes too. So if we split by words here, you can see that we get responsive behavior out of the box. The words just nicely wrap onto new lines as we resize. So that's the easy one, but this is the behavior that we want when we split by characters and lines too. But if we split by just characters, we can end up with some funny character by character reflows. See how the words are being split up here. I mean, this makes sense. We've broken up all of the characters into their own divs. So the browser doesn't really understand that they're words and need to be grouped together. So there's an easy fix for this. You just make sure that you group by characters and words. But in the new split text, we've also added smart wrap, which groups your words together, even if you only split by characters. So that's solved, but that's the little one. It's responsive line splitting that's the real headache, or at least it was in the past. If you've run into this before, you know what I'm talking about. So let's take a little look at the problem space in this demo. Again, if we break up the text by words, the text just reflows on resize, lovely. But when we break up text by line and then resize, uh oh, we start getting all these weird line breaks. So why is this happening? Well, if we toggle a border onto the lines and the words, you'll be able to see the issue. So you have the line container here, and when we squish it up, 
there's no longer space for all of the words to be on one line. So the word divs are breaking onto a new line, but they're constrained within the parent, which is awkward. Similarly, if we split at a small size and then we make the screen larger, the boundaries of our lines have already been defined, so the text doesn't reflow up into the larger space. Considering that websites need to be responsive, this is less than ideal. But happily for all of us, there's a new feature in Split Text to solve this. This new feature is called Auto Split, so let's enable this. Now that I have Auto Split set to true, you'll see that when we resize, everything reflows and resplits onto new lines. I'll do it a little slower. This here is the last word on the top row here. And then we make the screen smaller and you can see it's now the first word on the second row. So what's happening under the hood is that split text is listening to a resize observer on the element itself. And then if the element changes width and it's split by lines, it will trigger a new split. Perfect. So what if we want to animate this? Let's add a little animation. So on the first glance, this is perfect. So the text splits and then the animation grabs those elements and animates them. But if this text resplits, this animation is now targeting the old lines that don't exist anymore. So now our animation isn't working. So the solution to this is to ensure that we always pair auto split with the on split callback and then pop our animations inside. Let's take a little look. So if we add this on split callback with a little console log inside and then just resize, you can see that this fires every time the text splits. It's debounced for performance too, naturally. So to animate safely, all we have to do is pop our animation inside here and then reference it like this, ensuring that we are returning our animation too. So let's take a look at this animation now. Perfect, responsive line splitting. So why is it important that we return this animation? Well, when the text resplits, there might be more lines or less lines. And if we create an animation every time it resplits, we'd risk creating loads and loads of tweens and having overlapping animations. So under the hood, split text is doing this. First checking if there's an existing animation, then saving the progress, killing the old animation and inline animation styles, with revert, then creating a new one with the original progress value intact so that the animation looks seamless. But you don't have to worry about this. All you have to do is pop a return right there and then we handle it all for you. A little note that you can also manually call split or revert anytime you want. So if you have niche behavior that for some reason auto split isn't set up for, you can roll your own solution. So here's a fun little feature, masking. It's very common for folks to want to do animated reveal effects. So we've added masks to make your life a little bit easier. Just add masks into the config object, and then you can define either character or words or lines one at a time. So let's add a line mask. We've got class being added to the lines too here. So you'll see in the DOM, if we open this up, our masks also have a class name with a mask suffix um, at the end of it. So now we can animate our lines with a lovely mask reveal. Really nice and simple. When splitting text, you really have to be careful about blind or partially sighted users who might use a screen reader to help navigate your website. So screen readers analyze the content of a site and then convert that into speech. Let's have a little listen to this heading through a screen reader. Hello, I am a heading. Okay, so that makes sense. But what if we split it up into characters? H-E-L-L-O. I am a H-E-L-D-I-N-G. Yeesh, not ideal. Imagine a whole paragraph getting read out loud to you like that. So to help with this issue, split text adds an ARIA label onto the parent element and then hides all of the children nested inside it with ARIA hidden. With that approach, let's listen to the text again. Hello, I am a heading. Much better. So this default solution works for the majority of use cases, but because the text that surfaced to the screen readers here is just a string, there's not really any way for them to know about nested functionality like links or semantic tags. If you have a bit of text with links inside, for instance, we recommend duplicating your text elements and setting up your styles so that one element is visible to screen readers and the other element is visible to sighted users. 
So the screen reader accessible element isn't split and is hidden visually using a screen reader only class. And then on our split element over here, we're adding aria hidden inside our split text config to hide all of the split text. So now if we listen to this with a screen reader, you can hear that it announces all of the text and the link. This text has a link, nested link. So we have created a duplicate screen reader only element to preserve the semantics of child elements for screen readers. So this approach takes a little setup, but we've linked to it in the GSAP docs and in the description. A little note to use this route sparingly. Duplicating elements and text splitting can mean a lot of elements, which can bloat the DOM and have knock-on performance impacts. If you're creating a super jazzy text animation that's more decorative than functional, I recommend using aria none to avoid all automatic aria. Then you can pop role equals image on your element along with an aria label that describes the animation rather than reads out the contents. Kind of like treating your animation like a GIF or a video rather than some text. For extra accessibility points and also to optimize for performance, we recommend reverting the split text back to the original HTML after animation. So you can do this by calling revert on your split instance. If we do that in this oncomplete, when this animation finishes, then your text reverts back to the original HTML and it's no longer split up. Split text also works perfectly with match media. So if you want to handle reduced motion animations, that's super nice and easy too. Check out the match media video or docs for more info. Even if you have really unique text splitting needs, I reckon we've got something for you. Let's take a look at a few different options. So here we've got a few sup elements. Uh, it's styled so that you can see the split clearly, but when we split, you can see that the sup elements split into their own word. Maybe that's what you want, but you have a choice to ignore it if you want. So we'll tell split text to ignore these elements. This could be any element too, up to you. And now we can see that they're all grouped in nicely with the word that they belong with. If you have an even more complicated use case where you actually want to get inside the gubbins while split text is doing its thing, you have prepare text. So prepare text is a function that gets called out for each chunk of text as split text is iterating over it. So when it finds a bit of text to split, it passes it to this function and then you can work your magic on it. So here we're using a browser API to split up the Chinese text into words. Chinese text doesn't usually have visual breaks in between words, but here we're iterating through the segments and then adding a zero width space. Then we're using word delimiter after all this is done to handle all this for us. So there's a little regex pattern to find those breaks and then replace them with visual spaces. And we've got a little animation. Perfect. And that's a lot, pals. That's all I have for you. I will catch you soon. And if you get stuck, you know where we are. Bring a minimal demo.